Good day, I'm Lisa Rowe, and this is your JIS News for Wednesday, October 23, 2024. The government has partnered with Atomic Energy of Canada Limited and Canadian Nuclear Laboratories Limited for the advancement of nuclear technologies adoption in Jamaica. This was confirmed with the signing of a Memorandum of Understanding MOU at Jamaica House on Tuesday. Prime Minister Dr. Andrew Holness says the partnership reflects the government's unwavering commitment to diversify the country's energy portfolio with new, clean and sustainable alternatives. The purpose of this MOU is not just to explore possibilities, but to bring possibilities to life. This is not a symbolic signing. This is not public relations. This is about Jamaica exploring technology, embracing technology for its economic development. Work will be undertaken with global experts to ensure that every aspect of nuclear energy, particularly waste management, is handled with the highest international standards. Energy Minister Darrell Vaz adds that the country will gain much from the exchange of scientists, engineers and other specialists. This collaboration will foster the sharing of knowledge, skills and best practices, driving innovation in research, development and practical applications. Together, we will build out a network of expertise that will benefit both Jamaica and Canada. Through organized seminars and meetings, we will ensure that our professionals remain at the forefront of nuclear technology and its peaceful applications. Discussions on the advancement of nuclear technologies adoption in Jamaica were initiated last year during the Prime Minister's visit to Canada. Both Canadian partners have endorsed the project. Words are great. But when you can execute efficiently, like this was done, uh, starting from the Prime Minister's first step, throwing that pebble into the stream and looking at the ripples that brought that MOU today, I say we can be proud of where we are. This event is a testament to the strong and enduring relationship between our nations. The government has approved $200 million in grant for the University of the West Indies, UWI, to establish a fiscal research center. The launch and the signing took place on Tuesday between UWI Mona and the Canada-based Institute of Fiscal Studies and Democracy. A partnership agreement was also signed by the Finance Ministry, UWI, and the Inter-American Development Bank, IDB. Minister of Finance and the Public Service, Dr. Nigel Clark, says a fiscal research center will strengthen and complement Jamaica's fiscal oversight and engage in regional knowledge sharing. The opportunities for research into and teaching of or learning of public financial management is very scarce in the region. Public financial management courses at an undergraduate level just do not exist. And that is one of the gaps that we're seeking to plug with the establishment of a fiscal research center here at the Mona campus of the University of the West Indies. We're very proud to be partnering with the government, to be partnering with our IDB multilateral partners, and to be partnering with all of the others um, that are involved in this institutional arrangement. And I think that if we have an institutional arrangement that is now going to help us to better appreciate the power of fiscal discipline, to drive that kind of stability that we need in the macroeconomy, the consequences are great. Meanwhile, the IDB has indicated that it will provide 250,000 US dollars for climate change research and 400,000 US dollars for general research and capacity building. Prime Minister Dr. Andrew Holness and National Security Minister Dr. Horace Chang have strongly condemned the killing of five men during a mass shooting at a football match in Pleasant Heights, Rockfort, Kingston on Monday. Two persons who sustained injuries during the incident remain in hospital in stable condition. Dr. Holness and Dr. Chang visited the community on Tuesday to offer condolences to the families of the deceased and assured them that justice would be served. Make no mistake, once we have identified who the criminals are, we will go after them and 
aggressively and intensely. Following the shooting, a 48-hour curfew was imposed in the area. Information from the Jamaica Constabular Force, JCF, Kingston Eastern Division, indicates that one of the perpetrators was killed in an operation in the area Monday night, during which a rifle was also retrieved. Dr. Chang pointed out that since yesterday, members of the JCF, JDF, and JCF Special Operations Team have been conducting activities to locate and apprehend the perpetrators. The security minister extended sympathies to the families who were affected and assured that the perpetrators would be relentlessly pursued until apprehended. And finally, the Jamaica Constabular Force, JCF, has officially commenced a recruitment drive for its Agricultural Wardens Program to address the growing issue of predator larceny across the island. The initiative is expected to recruit 300 wardens over the next three years. It is also projected to cost approximately $1.8 billion, with an initial expenditure of $390 million in the first year. Agriculture Minister Floyd Green gave the details of the program during yesterday's parliamentary sitting. He says advertisements have already been posted, attracting 100 applications for the first recruitment drive. Our first 100 agricultural wardens, once recruited, will participate in an extensive training program to include, among other areas, enforcement models, fundamentals of police duties and procedures, firearm training, defensive tactics and drills, community-based policing, evidence recording, court preparation, target hardening, and agricultural modules. Additionally, the wardens will be trained in animal traceability systems, legal frameworks, case preparation, and mock trial exercises, as well as obtaining motorcycle and motor vehicle driving certification. We know that it will take some time for us to tackle the issue of predator larceny. But we are taking deliberate steps to ensure that our farmers and fishers can reap what they sow and can truly benefit from their hard work, especially those farmers in our livestock sector. The Agriculture Ministry is encouraging individuals between the ages of 18 and 35 to apply. This can be done through the JCF's website or the JCF's recruiting office at 876-754-0600. Training for the new wardens is expected to commence in January 2025. And that's it for JIS News Today. I'm Lisa Rowe. Thanks for watching.